Welcome to the fifth episode of Downtime Podcast, where co-workers talk about video games. My name is Elisa, and this episode is a little different. What ended up happening was we recorded two shows pretty much within the same week, so we decided to just combine everything together. So for the first part, you'll be hearing Jeremy and I talking about Yakuza once more, some Final Fantasy updates, as well as talking about Persona and some DLC. So this week I dedicated to playing Final Fantasy 15. It's nice. been a while since I've played it because I sort of dropped off to play Yakuza and all yes. these other games. And I finally started um, picking up on the storyline for 15. Mm. And you know, it, like one thing I really noticed about the game is there's a period where it's very open world and I think I talked about this in maybe the second podcast or the first podcast where mm-hmm. you can pretty much do all these side quests and all these things and yeah. like for example um, part of your mission uh, as the main character Noctis has to collect 12 uh, I forgot how many swords but he has to collect swords of previous kings cool. of his kingdom to kind of um, get their powers right right and i know i've been noticing for these past few chapters that one i've had to actually go out and find these dungeons on my own like previously Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the story led to them but now it's like oh like you're off to find these you know dungeons like you know do your thing you can do it in whatever order you want doesn't really matter now i've reached a point where the storylines become a lot more linear okay and i mean i think that's fine I think the storyline's very interesting so far. Okay. Don't want to go into much spoilers, mm-hmm. but I will say this. So, when the game first came out, the first two weeks, and people have been playing it, there's a specific chapter that was super controversial, and I don't know why. Like, I actually haven't looked at the spoilers for it, but it's, yeah. it's chapter 13. Okay. And if you just look up anything about chapter 13 of Final Fantasy 15, they're just like this chapter sucks or like this like you know this chapter like almost like ruined the game like all of these like really like hot t- like all these hot takes on it that i have no idea what happened to the point that square enix is having a a patch or where it's going to redo chapter 13 it's completely like exactly like i don't know oh, wow. yeah i don't know how bad it is though is the thing you're not there yet you i'm said? like three chapters away like oh okay yeah, i'm three chapters away from it so i have no idea well play before the patch comes out you see that's you see that's another thing like do i want snow do i want to actually know what the original 13th chapter is mm-hmm. or do i want to just play with the patch i think you should do it I think you should play without the patch first. Play, with, yeah. play without the patch. Yeah, just to see the original. Okay. And then you can compare it, because like, what if you could never experience that ever again, you know? That is very true. And, yeah, just, I say just do it. <laughs> okay. So, I suppose I'll go through the 13th... I'll go through the 13th chapter. Yeah, why not? And then, and then you can tell us how it goes, because I, I don't know how it goes. Yeah. I'm probably not going to play it until after the, the patch is released, so at least you'll be the one that could say yeah. that you played it between and then, the two of us. Okay, and then I can I can let everyone know how I feel yeah. playing both of them. You so. can report back. <laughs> yeah, I can report back. That's cool. Yeah, and another cool thing with the side missions is I've been really getting into all the Chocobo stuff oh. and really leveling up my Chocobo nice. like with um, traveling around and like doing the races. I just think that this is the best game for chocobos or the representation and graphic of chocobos. Like they're really cute in this game. So, awesome. Because the thing is, is it's not just the adult bird, but they also have baby chocobos That's in the game, so and they're super cute. They're basically yeah. chi- they're chickens. Like there's yeah, and they're really adorable. And um, so there's a there's a po there's a post where you can. Uh, hang out and do missions and rest and it's called uh, mm-hmm. Wiz Chocobo Post cool and that's pretty much like where I've been doing like a lot of random like side quests to that's it. cool yeah yeah but you're enjoying the game how many hours have you sunk into it so far? oh my god I'm pretty much like 40 hours into this 40 game. hours yeah nice. you know they always say so they've been saying that this is the shortest Final Fantasy game right just by doing the actual story uh-huh. but I've been doing a lot of the side quests so it basically feels like a normal Final Fantasy game to me. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Granted, the storyline is way shorter, though. 
Gotcha. That is de- like that is definitely correct. It, it also even feels like the cut scenes are shorter, because mm. usually there's a lot of dialogue in Final Fantasy. That's how you learn about the characters. That's how you learn about the story. This time around, it's very feels very limited. Um, and on that note, I don't partic- I don't know yet if this is my. This is definitely not my favorite Final Fantasy story. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a lot easier to cut, wrap to wrap your head around. It's not as difficult. It's not that difficult. Okay. Um. But I but I definitely think that because they were trying to appeal to a wider audience and kind of get this sh- get this shortened and a lot simpler from Final Fantasy thirteen, that the storyline is just kind of too simple to me. Mm-hmm. Although. I'm only on chapter 10. Like, yeah, yeah. who knows what's going to happen? Because there's 15 chapters right, altogether right. because it's Final Fantasy 15. Ah, wow. Okay. I know, so clever. Right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm still five chapters away from the game ending. Well, probably by 13, some shit will go down. Yeah, you know? most likely. Well, if 13 is the controversial chapter, yeah, yeah, so, so exactly. we'll see, so we'll see what down. happens. Yeah, I hope you find whatever you're looking for to make it a better story. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we'll see, and I'll update everyone on how that goes. Sweet, I can't wait. Yeah, and you are still playing Yakuza still Zero. Still playing Yakuza Zero. Still playing it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> it's the only game I'm playing right now. I have I'm primarily a PC gamer. I've said that before. Yeah. But I've completely ditched the PC just to play Yakuza Zero. Like it's taken over my life. Whenever I go home, I'm like, I eat dinner. I'm like. Time to go play Yakuza Zero, and so last time I talked about playing the pocket car racing, and I I've almost finished that, but I kind of got bored and sidetracked. Yeah. And I started investing in the real estate mini game, and I've been making a lot of money. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I actually beat Mr. Shakedown t- like twice last night. So. Wow. Do you know how much? Guess how much money I have right now. Oh my god. <laughs> do you have five hundred million yen? More than that. More than that. Oh, much. But more. actually, no, 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 no. I take that. I take that back. You get a lot of money when you defeat people in this game. Oh yeah, and you, it just keeps going up. Yeah, you're at. I bet you at. Oh, Four billion. Close. I'm at five billion. You're at five billion. Five billion. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I, so I, I'm at the point now because I told myself I, I have like one more race left in the pocket car, pocket circuit car racing. I'm like. Yeah. I'm going to make enough money to buy all these parts. Yeah. I got to the point where I got so sidetracked with just making money. I've been so obsessed with just making money. <laughs> so now I'm like, I just want to be a billionaire. And now I actually am. I'm a five billionaire to be exact. And so as long as Mr. Shakedown keeps appearing, I'm still going to fight him and get whatever it's I It's really addicting though. It um, is. Getting money because... Oh, yeah. Especially because how easy it is in that game to get money because I'll like spend money on weapons yep. or clothes and real pretty much useless things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I'll realize, oh god, like where do, where the hell did all my money go? But then I realize, oh, there's a bunch of men in black attacking me, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I can make my money right now. Oh yeah, I remember like first walking into a convenience store, I only had like what a thousand yen, which is like ten bucks, and I was like, oh yeah. man, this cup of ramen's half my budget, and then now I have five billion yen. I'm like. I could afford all the ramen in here. And it's funny because I stopped buying. It's like, imagine in real life if you're a billionaire. Like, I stopped buying food from the store, per se. I started going out and eating more. <laughs> That's oh, what I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a reflection of my real life a persona. Reflection. Oh my God. So I just I started eating out more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to get fat. Oh, that's right. I'm a video game character. I can't get fat. Unless you're playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas uh, and CJ can get fat. I just like being fat, CJ. Yeah. His voice just got deeper. I'm like, this is weird, but I love it. Oh, CJ. And CJ's like super fat. Like, get in the car. And I'm like, that car's going to fall over. The funny thing is when he eats a lot, but he's still, but if you still continue to work him out, so he's just like this really bloated, like muscular <laughs> yeah. guy. And it's weird. Yeah, like, but it's, it's pretty, it's really funny though. That's why they took it out after every game after. They're like, this is weird. <laughs> that's why it's not in four or, or five. I'm like, thank God they took it out. I know. Yeah, so I'm still playing Yakuza 0. I'm obsessed with making money, uh, buying stuff, like buying properties to make more money, and that's probably what I'm going to do tonight. Um, For sure. I'm probably going to play yeah. um, a little more Final Fantasy tonight. Sounds I'm good. pretty much determined to finish that game in the next three weeks or so, which I guess leads to the next topic. The reason I'm trying to finish this goddamn game, and then also <laughs> Yakuza 0 eventually, yeah, yeah. is because... Um, I pre-ordered Persona 5. Oh my god. <laughs> and I talked about it at the last podcast, 
Persona 4, Golden, is one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. I was thinking about it because the Switch just came out and all these things. Yeah. And the and the I don't know what Sony's plans are, if there is, even is going to be a portable after Vita. But there was such... It was really nice playing Persona 4 on that type of platform uh-huh. where it's a, it's a portable. It goes through like day morning day evening like it goes through you going to school yeah. like like what you do at night to hang out what you're doing on the weekends so it's really it's a really dense game because yeah. it's per day so it, there was an appeal to playing it portably i'm gonna have to t- check that out and yeah like it's like animal crossing you know yeah exactly like you you can't you can you can animal crossing is the game where you can spend literally one in-game day and just call it quits for that day yeah exactly you know? and that's what's that's what's great about it yeah and that's what you're, i'm getting the vibe from persona because i've never played persona before but i've been recommended by my my old former roommate and he's like yeah you should check it out oh definitely and i really want to but you um, should kind of playing yakuza right oh now. yeah totally and plus like yakuza kiwami is going to come out in the summer and yeah. i'm probably going to play the shit out of that too when it comes out <laughs> Yeah. So it's either Persona or Yakuza, and right now. And Yakuza. Persona is a long ass game too. Yeah, it's heard. really long, and the fact that I've played that game three times just you know I've wasted. I did not waste hours of my life. Yeah, why would you say I did that? not waste hours. I experienced a lot of hours. Yeah, there you I, go. I experienced many things playing that game over and over you again. You got the full PlayStation experience. I did, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, is this is exactly what I'm telling you, the portability of it. Like, yeah. I played it in between class or gotcha. when I was in college yeah. or, um, like, before homework. And, you know, mm-hmm. like, I just pick it up and just stop playing it. So You can play it on the train right now. I could. Like I really yeah. could play on the train. So... Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm really, really excited to play that game. You know, I wouldn't be surprised because so the difference between Persona 4 and Persona 4 Golden, Persona 4 was the original PS2 mm. game and Persona 4 Golden was a uh, was is that same game on Vita. They added a few more um, social links. Basically, they added two more side characters. Oh, two cool. more. Yeah, they added two more side characters. So. Right, right. Um, but they're pretty much the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if you can find Persona 4 available on the store or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm mean, sure they'll have it available. You can yeah. just download. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- these kinds of games are what always make me happy. Like, not really lifestyle games, because I think Yakuza and Persona are very similar in, in different ways, but they're also different. They because, are. Like, you know, not just in story and look, but like they're similar because. They both feature a lifestyle element where you could it's very do true. things. You know, you yeah. Can, in Yakuza, you could date women. I'm sure in Persona, you could do the same thing. You can. Yeah. So in Persona Four, the main character has a choice of three of his friends. Ah, uh, interesting. Oh, typical. <laughs> yeah, it's really typical. But just in general, like he goes through his regular school life. Uh, the name of the character is Yu, actually. Why Yu? Okay. Okay. And um, Yu goes. <laughs> I'm just thinking about Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you. you. <laughs> he goes through school life. He has a choice what after school activities he can join. Like he can join soccer. Wow. He can join basketball. <laughs> he can join a band if he really wants to. Kay. He can choose to tutor people. Um, he can choose to not do anything after school huh. and just go out with his friends. Like, um, like there's just a lot of there's a lot of um, that's why I played it three times. Gotcha. There's a lot of playability choosing different tracks, and the thing is, like with each track that you decide to play, it's connected to a social link. And pretty much for anyone who's never played Persona Four before or any Persona series, a social link is basically your friendship with someone, mm. and you get different social links on depending on the activities that you um, decide for your character to play through and with each acti- with each activity and each social link you get different things of course that will benefit uh-huh. you in the end so okay. that's why so that's why i liked playing it too i was and not just learning the story of each friendship but um just finding out what i got in the end from each which by the way about the whole dating thing you're saying with um persona 4 yeah. um so the three mate so you get to choose between three of your friends yeah, damn. i mean technically <laughs> You don't have to actually. I just realized. I think for the purpose of a specific thing towards the end of the game, you do have to choose um, who you want to date because 
basically what happens is um, there's a special Christmas day. And on that Christmas day, the girl that you're dating will give you a gift. And that gift is an accessory and power up. Ooh. for your battle so, so. It's, a, it's a different one every time right it, it is uh, yeah so you have to pick which power up you want basically basically what it boils down to i know so wow. there's and just like really random because i always, i like talking about persona 4 so like there's um there are there's technically seven main characters but okay there's seven main characters there's six people that go to school and these are like the humans and then there's a teddy bear character uh, and the teddy bear character actually turns into a human at some point interesting yeah so it's like of, of course you have to have that in one yeah. of these games because Very anime yeah because if you don't then are you really playing a jrpg <laughs> <laughs> yeah i pre-ordered it i pre-ordered the steelbook version of it Ooh, so you get like the fancy booklet too yeah Ooh. because i i don't order I don't order a lot of physical games anymore mm. unless I really like the series. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And so I really like the Persona series, so nice. I had to do this just as I did with Uncharted. Ah, uh, so. right, right. Yeah. What kind of PS4 do you have again? Do you know? I actually have an Uncharted 4 PS4. I mean, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's because so cool. that, that was one, um, the first time... I pre the first time I got my PS4, I waited for Uncharted 4 to come out. So. Oh, like because um for me that was the because you know how like PS4 like when the when a console comes out sometimes it takes like one or two years for you to actually like have the game that you really want to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, not everything's on launch. Of course, and you know like being a broke college student before, um I couldn't buy the PS4 when it actually came out. Right. So. I waited for Uncharted 4. That was like my game. Nice. And then it was now worth I, the wait. It was worth the wait cuz now I have a really cool like gray blue PS4. That's so cool. And the the cover is um the Uncharted cover. So oh, very so cool. Nathan Drake kind of like looking at the ground in that pose. Oh wow. If you remember what the cover looks like. I actually like. don't know what it looks like. <laughs> but um uh is it, is it a PS4 Pro? Is that what it is or a slim? Do you know? It is not, it is, it's neither actually. Oh, it's the original. The original. Yeah. Well, so I have that one. Yeah. yeah. So when I got this, um, when I got this PS4, the collector edition PS4, it was actually before those two things were announced. Oh. Like, in fact, I feel like it happened two months after those things were announced. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I mean, granted, I don't need a, I don't need the pro. I don't have a 4K TV anyways. Same. And then I, but I do like the slim actually, like my three and my ps2 and my ps3 are slims oh. <laughs> and they're really nice but mm. i do love my drake console and i'm probably oh, yeah. i'm not gonna you know yeah get another one, or same. trade it trade it so yeah same here I, I like what i have now honestly it does it gets the job done I it can does play all my games um i don't have to change anything but yeah aside from the fact i actually changed out the hard drive recently yeah from 500 gigs to two terabytes and so Damn. Now, yeah it's a lot of space <laughs> Because I, I, because before my five hundred my five hundred gigs was all filled up, and I'm like, oh man, I still want to play all these games because I had Last of Us and Uncharted, like the all four Uncharted games on there, and I still yeah. wanted to go back and play them. So, in order to not sacrifice space, I just bought a new hard drive for like eighty bucks. And oh, I was definitely. Like, I'm gonna bite the bullet. It's gonna go. It's gonna help me in the long run. I won't it have will. to, you know, buy more space. I feel like I should do that. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. So you would restore it too, and yeah. plus I also have PT on my hard drive, mm -hmm. and so I want to keep that because oh, yeah. obviously that's so valuable. To it is <laughs> for whoever. Um, so if any listeners out there, I have a 500 gigabyte hard drive with PT on it. Just, just saying. <laughs> hey. um, yeah. Right. So, anyways, yeah, two terabytes. I'm getting ready for the ukulele, Yakuza Kiwami, Persona Five, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, all these games I'm probably going to buy or have bought already and then uh, yeah. just waiting to, for it to come out or I'll just install it in the future. Which reminds me, you and I should play a game together. For Yakuza? Since, oh, no, any, it's just a multiplayer game. Oh, like, yeah, a, a I'm co down. A co-op game. Yeah, I'm totally down And then we that. can talk about our experience in it. But yeah. I just don't know what good co-op games are on PS4 right now. I mean, we can just play any co-op game because Yakuza has... Um, oh, that's right. They have the online thing. I haven't. I haven't actually tried it yet. I haven't even looked. I don't I even have know. No what. idea. Same. At all. I uh, like pretty much the only person I ever play with is um, my sister's boyfriend, gotcha. and it, it's two K. So. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about picking that up, but I'll think I'll wait till it goes on sale. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we we should definitely should. 
Well, I'll wait for you till you're, fin- till you're finished with Final Fantasy 15, and when you're fully invested in Yakuza Zero, the, that's yeah, when we'll play for sure. And I feel like I really feel like if I put a good three weeks into Final Fantasy, I could finish it. Sure, yeah, and yeah. it's also better if they were both playing different things. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we could we could talk about it because I've never played Final Fantasy before, and yeah. you're not as far as I am in Yakuza Zero, so it kind of gives like a fresh perspective on stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna spoil the story for your sake and the audience's sake since it's actually a pretty good story so far. Yeah, and uh, the stuff you do in the game is it is a really good story i agree oh yeah and there's like 11 chapters i'm on chapter six right now so yeah still got a ways to go oh <laughs> taking yeah. my sweet time oh yeah collecting my money i know by the way um so funny how i was talking about pre-ordering persona 5 okay. i i actually googled persona 5 mm-hmm. right now uh, so now like there's been a lot of pre-reviews for like the past 24 hours like i i suppose really i feel like maybe a sanction was lifted and now people are, like are allowed to post their review nice and um yeah what we were talking about how yakuza zero and persona 5 are really trying to um kind of bring to life the japan lifestyle like yeah. this is a this is a screenshot ah, of, i've seen that before yeah there's a screenshot it of looks um, like the yakuza <laughs> yeah it does and the screenshot that i'm currently looking at right now is it looks like the main character of persona 5 and he's walking through the shibuya area and the caption is actually shibuya station central street so very accurate yeah i haven't actually really looked into this game so i don't know exactly how much they're going to be showing you of the city I hope it's a lot because I like games that accurately represent a city. Yeah. So for Persona 4, um, they represented a town. I don't actually know if the town was based off of something, but it looks it does look like Persona 5 is happening in the city. Right. So. By the way, this is your PS4? Yes, that uh, is my PS4. I'm, just, I'm showing her a picture of the Uncharted Edition PS4. It's, it's like a matte blue. It's awesome. With like a, yeah, yeah. You, you should never, ever trade this in for a PS4 oh, no. Pro. You it's, have to keep this. I'm keeping it forever is, and yeah, ever. Yeah, no, seriously. This is really <laughs> sweet, actually. Yeah. I would not trade this in for a Slim or Pro. I know. It, nice. oh, by the way, I do have one more thing to say about Uncharted 4. So Naughty Dog came out with an announcement. DLC. DLC. The campaign, yeah, I yeah, saw. The campaign with Chloe and Nadine. Mm-hmm. Um, for people who uh, have never played the Uncharted series before, um, they're going to have a DLC up from two female characters of the game. Nadine is was sort of the enemy or the villain of Uncharted 4, but then you kind of you kind of like find out her like not really find out her story but she's not as bad as another villain yeah and then chloe is basically like nathan's ex yeah in, oh yeah in uncharted 2 uncharted 2 I uncharted think. 2 yes yeah it's funny i know and <laughs> i it's just those two characters of all characters like how do they know each other that's so random. i know so we're but about it's cool to, it is really cool i do you know when it's coming out because i kind of want to buy it and play it I don't know when it's coming out. I actually just saw the announcement yesterday. Oh, okay. I'm I'll assuming see. it's going to happen in the, maybe the summer. I, right. Yeah, I don't know how much they've been working on it. I know that the name of the DLC is called The Lost Legacy. Right, right. They're looking for some artifact in India, I think. I believe so. It's based in India. Yeah. Did you see the preview for it? It like, takes place in yes. a war zone. It was really cool. Yeah, it like, is, really is really cool. This is really immersive. I know. And I think another... Uh, I think another thing they said was they don't intend on having an uncharted spin-off in in their announcement. Right. And so this like as we know it, this DLC might be the very last uncharted thing. But why are they ending it? Like they know it's super popular and people still throw money at it. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's different aspects of it. It is a lot of money if you created a spin-off without the Drakes. Right. It would still be popular, but like for, but I do understand the idea that you know Uncharted is like a really like good series. Maybe we shouldn't just have a spinoff. Maybe mm-hmm. we should just end it mm-hmm. and you know like leave it on a very high note because Uncharted Four ended on a really high note. It did, yeah. And then another aspect that I understand is you know you can't always create spinoffs. You gotta create. You gotta innovate. You gotta create new games yeah. and. 
You, and Naughty Dog is pretty creative. From, yeah. From Uncharted, they created The Last of Us. So yeah, they're pretty good at making new IPs for yeah. the audience to enjoy. And exactly. I think that, like you just said, they're they'll, they'll come up with something that the people will love because I think it's like making Back to the Future. Like yeah. more than three is fine. Like there's more than enough. Like we yeah. don't need more than three. In this case, <laughs> in this case, it's four. Yeah. But those four are so classic it's like you can't touch them anymore i know you can remake them sure look at resident evil 4 it's been remade on literally every system since it really has (laughs) since gamecube yeah ps2 wii ps3 (laughs) ps4 pc ps xbox one yeah yeah xbox 360 so Mm -hmm. timeless games like that will always be here exactly and i think instead of creating a spin-off you just leverage your popularity with uncharted and the last of us now people know of this company called naughty dog oh and, yeah totally and you and you don't even really have to create a spin-off anymore you just have to create a game mm-hmm. make sure that people don't forget about you oh yeah is the, is the biggest thing yeah so it'll be exciting where they go next i know and whatever game that they make exactly and that's the end of part one now for part two, where Jeremy and I are joined by Brandon once more, as well as our friend Donovan walking in and out. We talk about Jeremy playing Breath of the Wild, more Yakuza updates, more Final Fantasy updates, as well as kind of go a little off topic. Hi. I'm Elisa. I'm Jeremy. Hi. That's Brandon. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and uh, just a few things before we start this podcast, if you notice it, Jeremy. We're in a very echoey room is the first one. Second one is someone might barge in on us and we're going to have to cut to a sponsor. That's not sponsor. Blue Apron. Yeah, that's not Blue Apron, quote unquote sponsor. Also, you might hear some uh, car noises since we're next to a window. We, we have about five conference, conference rooms in our office and we're trying to find the perfect one. Yeah, and the last one that we recorded where everything worked really well um that one got knocked down so <laughs> yeah <laughs> we can't. literally so we're gonna we're gonna have to improvise actually i think i know a good place we could do these <laughs> if you want to just set up shop somewhere else right now where's that the recording studio <laughs> oh sh- too bad that recording studio is only it's like one person it's like one person <laughs> yeah <laughs> we c- even better yeah. <laughs> yeah well we'll figure out something later on yeah for now we're gonna be here so please bear with us and all the audio issues that plague this podcast episode yes we're live after work there's a lot of content to talk about um so ongoing we're still talking about yakuza zero that doesn't end yeah. what i have to say is i'm f- i've finally caught up to the point where i'm playing with uh Majima, and that's mm-hmm. based in Sotenbori, which is Osaka. And it's what I have to say first is this is a completely different vibe that you get yeah. from playing with um, Kiryu. Yeah, no, I got you. I, I like the city vibe. I definitely like Majima a little bit more as a protagonist as opposed to Kiryu. Yeah. Uh, Majima, he seems more <clears throat> open and friendly, and he is. Kiryu is a little bit more stoic and mean. And uh, the difference between the two of them is actually Majima smiles and Kiryu doesn't. <laughs> That's the biggest difference I've noticed. I mean, I feel like you have to find a reason to smile if someone stabbed your eye. So <laughs> yeah. turn that frown and say, "Damn, something yeah. happy." Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'll be back. Oh, <laughs> looks like as we said before, Brandon's being pulled away into something, <laughs> and we have eyes looking at us. Um, so yeah, as Brandon leaves, we will continue our conversation about Yakuza. I think... Um, oh, we have another co-worker barging in. Hi! Hey. How's it going? Our co-worker Donovan just walked in on us. He wants to hang out. I guess he's looking at us and smiling. And I don't think you... Are you going to be part of the podcast or are you just going to watch us? I'm just going to watch you guys. Okay, fine. Oh, okay, that's fine. If you have to interject, <laughs> just let, let, me, yeah. let, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, so I like, I like Majima as a character. I think I like him a lot more than Kiryu. I like the city of Osaka as it's rendered in the game. I think it's really cool. What I liked about uh, Majima's intro is that he didn't resort to violence the very first time that, yeah. that you're introducing him. Of course, now that you've learned all of his abilities and battle systems, he has like a baseball bat and like all these different ways of fighting. But the first time you get to know him, he has this thing with his cabaret club, Customer's King. Mm-hmm. And he, I like that... Yeah, you do kill people, not kill people, because both Kiryu and Majima don't kill people, but mm-hmm. you hurt people. 
there are times where you have to resort to violence, but at the same time, if you can avoid it, he does avoid it. I will say about the violence part, it, it, there are times when it does look like the Kiryu and Majima kill people because there but, are, but you they, get guns in the game, you is, shoot people. I know. You which stab is, people. You stab people, you shoot people. I have a dagger right now yeah. on Majima, but at, but they're, but when I beat up these thugs or these men in black, <laughs> it turns out like, oh, they're just alive. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> have you ever done the special move with a dagger with Majima? Yes. Have you, he like kicks it up in the air yes, and yes. the blood comes out of the guy's yeah. stomach. I'm like, that guy has to be dead. He has to be totally dead. But he's not. Exactly. That's what bothers me. It's like, you, this game is rated M for mature and you don't kill people. What is that? I but, know. Okay. I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. It's different. Um, it, it, that could be improved upon a bit, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, um, totally. And I guess another thing that I'll say about, uh, by, by the way, you did have something to say about the Cabaret yeah, Club. Yeah, unless you want to say your point first. No, because that's a different topic. Okay, so. okay. So uh, Cabaret Club, you, he runs one. It's, it's, um, uh, it's called The Grand. It's not really a spoiler. But later on in the game, you uh, actually run your own Cabaret Club because the one you're running in the beginning is actually, I mean, you know what, I'm not going to say it. And yeah. it's kind of like running the real estate game that I talked about last week that I was obsessed with. Um, because you get to make money by having opening a shop. And what a cabaret club is, if you aren't familiar with it in Japan, is it's a club where girls come up to you oh, and they yeah. sit with you and they talk to you and they like, you drink with them, the you toast with them. The only time in my life. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. You, you should, we should go to Japan together. I've actually, I've never been to one, but I've only read articles and seen it in movies and media. And uh, this counts as one of those medias where you run the club you pick the girl. You pick the lineup of girls that you want to showcase at the club, and they all have different personalities oh, and different yeah. traits. And then the customers they come in wanting to see those traits, and then you pair them up with that customer, and, and oh. there's a happiness level. And but yeah, that's that's enough about the cabaret club. I mean, I, it went. My obsession went from pocket car racing to real estate, now to running a, a club, club full of girls. So. You see how that trajectory is. <laughs> yeah, I went from little kid to man. I know. Mean, <laughs> like not PC. Um, this is a. Um, it's an action adventure action game. Adventure game. <laughs> <laughs> Yakuza Zero. It's for PlayStation Four. Yes. It's pretty cool. Okay. For all of you that don't know what PlayStation Four is, it's actually the fourth iteration of the PlayStation <laughs> uh, consoles. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> now, so you want to talk about a complaint you had with the game? At this point, it's the best thing about this. One of the best things about this game, but it's also one of the worst things about this game because I'm now there are points especially with um, side mission like mm-hmm. unav- and I'm talking about the unavoidable side ah, missions yes. and yes. all of these different things where I'm just like god shut up you're mm-hmm. talking way too much right now mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of like I'm drowning in dialogue basically. yeah no, there, there are scenes <laughs> later on from Majima that go on for like 20 minutes of just dialogue. drown me in your words <laughs> <laughs> ooh I'll say that, yeah, when I go to the cabaret club, I'll be like, I'll just oh. say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it's... It's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot yeah. to read. It's a lot to listen to. And um, it can drone on. And some of the stuff they say is redundant and repetitive. And it's like, I, this could have been solved in like five minutes. I know. There's this one side mission in particular. It's the side mission where you're in um, the uh, Sotenbori uh-huh. uh, area and you're by the river and there's one of those people like in San Francisco where they're painted gold and they pretend to be a statue <laughs> and I swear to fucking yes. god like that mission took <laughs> 20 minutes just because of all of this talking yes. when it could have like the presentation of it could have taken three minutes yeah and yep. it was at that point I realized this is way too much Did you- uh, it's it's yeah that I I really don't like that mi- mission in particular. But there's also this is going on a tangent. Do you know the mission where you have to escort the guy across the bridge? Did you do that one? Yet? I don't think I've did. Th- but anyways, go on. Uh, okay, I'll just give you a tip. Use a shotgun when you're, when you're okay. trying to escort him across the bridge. Well, that's good. That's it. That's, that's all good. I'm that's you. good to know. Just use a shotgun. Thank, thank you. You're very thank welcome. You for that advice. Solve everything. Yeah, yeah. They, they pretty much do in Yakuza. They they pretty much do. Oh, you're talking about the game. Oh, <laughs> not in our America. My bad. Oh. America. <laughs> Random tangent, but uh, I actually know a friend of a friend who used to be a cabaret girl at one of these clubs, and I have yet to meet her, but when I do, I will report back to this podcast and tell you guys, because wow. I want to actually talk to her, because yeah. I heard she's like super quiet and reservative, like in reserve, because uh, she never got to know what it was like to speak to like real 
men because she only got to pretend to talk to men because in the cabaret club you have to please the man in a way where you're trying to praise them and also like talk about yourself a little bit so she doesn't know how to talk to guys in a very like real way so i kind of want to understand what that's, that's like. interesting yeah huh so yeah and one of the when you first play with majima like i suppose one of the first things you do is you're actually fighting with another cabaret club over a girl Yes. Or you're trying to get, or you're trying to get another girl. And if you kind of remember from that first scene, she was actually kind of like super awkward mm -hmm. and didn't really know how, <laughs> yeah. how to talk to him. So I'm not. It's not. It doesn't surprise me in any way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we'll see what happens when I actually meet a real cabaret, former cabaret hostess. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, did we want to talk about some other games that we're playing? So. So real quick, I just want to talk about. Um, Rocket League because that game is amazing. Ah. I and I I just like played a game for a little bit, but they have a new patch and the new patch is um in the levels like you can break through the floor. What? As well as um the goals are in the floor now too. Ah. Like so, for this level. So what you're saying is it's time for me to add another Steam game to my collection. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh, good. Uh I, it's pretty good for Steam too. I recommend it. Okay. Yeah. I am, I am grateful for your recommendation. You should add me on Steam, Brandon. We'll play games together. I will. We will trade information after this. Sure. These, <laughs> these short messages from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Blue Apron. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Brandon, what are, you what are you playing right now? Are you still playing Breath of the Wild? I am playing uh, Save My Sanity. And, and whatnot. I, I have not actually been playing much video oh, games. Okay. A little bit of Ble Breath of the Wild, that's about it. Um, I think I might have played an hour of Fallout 4. Oh, wow. Uh, a couple of nights ago. That was interesting. I had downloaded the uh, 50 gig texture pack from Steam. Wow, is it free? It was free. Wow, uh, okay, I'll have to look into that. It doesn't look a whole lot better. It, Maybe I won't look into that. It's 50 gigabytes? <laughs> it's 50 gigabytes. It's a whole Does it game. look like 50 gigabytes? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it does. It's very, everything is, is very sharp. It's much sharper than it was. Cool. So if, if texture resolution is one of your pet peeves, then I recommend getting the 50 gigabyte patch that increases the texture resolution in Fallout 4. Some people really care about that, though. Like, also, you might want to like the Fallout 4 game, too. I wouldn't recommend <laughs> you download the, the texture pack for the game yeah. if you didn't want to play the game. So like, This game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I buy it? And you spent like, what, 50, 60 bucks on it? But yeah, I, actually, I had the ending spoiled for me, so I stopped playing it because I was actually pretty pissed off. Was that me? Did I do that? No, it actually wasn't you. It was, uh, it was, I read it on a forum on Reddit, and I was like, this is fucking... Uh. Well, that's, well, that's another... I feel like Problem. if you had played yeah. through it and got the ending the n normal way, it still would have been spoiled for you and you still oh, would have yeah. pissed off. I feel like, it, yeah, they were, it's already hinted at. I knew what it was going to be before I finished the game. I like the game because you can treat it as an open-ended sandbox game. You don't have oh, yeah. to complete the main quest lines that I normally don't. So <laughs> I've never played Fallout before, but from what I'm hearing, the endings are bad. Not necessarily bad. I think uh, they run out of time. Yeah. I think Bethesda is pretty infamous for they have these grand ideas. They get through a lot of them, so you'll see awesome gameplay in the beginning. Yeah. And then towards the end of the development cycle, they're running out of money, they're running out of time. They have to deliver something that isn't complete trash, so they wrap it up quickly. You know, the Grammy Awards with the big box that says, wrap it up. <laughs> That's yeah. what they got in their studio. So basically, they're... Their storyline, the main quests are very, very short, and they, they hope that you'll do all the side quests and all the bigger, like the little stuff to make up for that time that's like supposed to be like 90 hours of content in one game. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of that content is actually just traveling. If, if you haven't unlocked fast traveling, you have to like literally walk from place to place. Oh, and the maps okay. can be pretty huge. You know, it's the journey. Yeah. The journey is <laughs> yeah. what counts. Because I'll be honest, I, did you play New, uh, New Vegas? I did. Yeah, I, the endings for Fallout 3 and New Vegas, they were okay for me. Like, I wasn't satisfied at the end. I didn't feel like I completed a long journey. I just felt like that was it. That... I, uh, I don't think I ever really officially completed any of the journeys. At some point, I may have killed the wrong people out of turn. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. and, Been there, and unintentionally that. unlocked some endings. And mm -hmm. I was like, hmm. Disappointing. Yeah. No, I, I, I got you. 
because you know once you accidentally figure out some of those endings mm -hmm. it kind of like ties the whole thing together and throws away a lot of the secrets that you were gonna run into oh yeah no totally there's a formula you kill a person they affect the ending you kill another person they affect the ending even more yeah that's pretty much how it works for all fallout games yeah but that shouldn't that shouldn't I, stray you from the atmosphere i i think that's cool actually the multiple the multiple endings mm -hmm. that you get um and how a lot of things impact your ending kind of like heavy rain yeah yeah that that game is pretty cool they're making the, that guy what's his name the guy who made that game something cage I don't remember. David Cage. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the guy. I think but it's David Cage. The name Cage. of the company is Quantum. So right. Test your might. They're making a new game for PS4. It's called like Detroit Something Stories. Have I've you seen that? I've heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. It's I saw it cool. briefly. I know after they made Heavy Rain, because Heavy Rain's like one of my top three favorite oh, yeah. games of all time. It's like a movie, but you interact with it. I know. And what I really like about Heavy Rain is just like the story it tells in just like 10 hours of mm -hmm. gameplay. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was excited for the game. I forgot what it was called, but the one where Ellen Page was actually going to voice someone. Yeah, I don't remember and the I ended title. Up, I ended up not playing it. And then I stopped following right. Quantum. Yeah, but yeah, I'll no worries. But I'll probably check it out. Yeah, look, just look up Detroit PS4 game, and that game will pop up. It, it's like you have to make different choices. Like, the trailer is, like, of this guy. There's, like, androids, and you're controlling an android, and androids are made by the humans, and some of the androids go rogue, and they capture other humans and try to, like, hold them hostage or something like that, and then part of your job as an android police officer is to stop these crimes from happening. Okay. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> and Brandon's like waving his arms in the air. <laughs> when it comes to really random, uh, when it comes to, not random, but when it comes to multiple ending games, do you guys sometimes um, figure out how to get the ending that you want and then play it through? Or you just kind of play the first time, you um, get whatever ending, and then you just rewatch all the endings in on YouTube or play or play the game again. I do that. I, I just play it the first time blind and whatever ending I get, I get. I agree. Yeah, because you don't know. You don't know how it's going to be. I get the best endings though because I'm the best. <laughs> Every time you just <laughs> yes. get the best one. I'm the best around. It's a great song. Because <laughs> I don't, because I always just play through, but at the same time, I'm also a little bit cautious of, huh, I don't. I feel like doing this is gonna get me a crappy ending. So I yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. But I like I overthink it almost. So here's a question for you guys: When you guys are playing a game with different choices, so let's say like Elder Scrolls, Far Cry, not Far Cry, ugh, Fallout. Do you guys usually skew good, skew bad, or in the gray area? Well, I will just base. Well, I'll base my answer off of the last choice game that I played, which was um, Persona Four. Okay. Golden, and I. Um, I always skew in the middle, but more towards good. And then also, like, another, just because you gave that specific example, when I played Red Dead Redemption, I was skewing good versus skewing bad. Gotcha. And the, but it also depends on the game, because if you skew good versus skew bad, it comes with different abilities or different treasures that yeah. you receive. So I'm also cautious of that. I tend to play my games as chaotic good. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Arguably is pretty bad still. So you murder everyone and just revive them right <laughs> <Yeah>. after? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> there, was, there was a time when I, I was obsessed with Fallout 4, and I played like just good the entire way, yeah. one playthrough, and the next playthrough, I murdered everyone. I just played bad the entire way just I don't to see what I've, it was like. I don't think I've ever played a game where I, was com like, I went to the bad side completely. Ooh. Yeah. You so. should try it. I don't know. But you feel bad doing it. That's the thing. I, like, I'm like, inside, <laughs> I feel really bad. I don't know what that is. Did you guys ever play a game uh, called Jade Empire? Yes. Yes, yes I yes. did. That was a very interesting uh, exercise in the balance of good and bad and mm -hmm. how it affected mm -hmm. your world and mm -hmm. how it affected your character. Yeah. Uh, and so what were you? I would tend to go open palm. Ah, nice. Uh, my dad liked to play that game a lot, so he went through like probably ten playthroughs. I think. Dang. Oh, wow. I only went through once. Yeah, same. Um, but he did like a different myriad, and and his ultimate conclusion was, you know, no matter which path you took, there was no real right answer in the mm, game because it ended up just kind of except being, for the perfect ending. Except for my perfect ending. <laughs> yeah, Brandon's ending I every time. I already achieved the first time, which is why I didn't play it multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> they call that a happy ending, Brandon. Yeah, so <laughs> either way, you know, your closed fist or mm -hmm. open palm, mm -hmm. it was ultimately you still achieved great things. 
Yeah. You just had your way of doing it. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think that's what a lot of gamers like when it comes to those kind of games. Like, which choices can I make? And they, they want to have that feeling of fulfillment when they do make those choices. And that's what gaming is all about, too, mm -hmm. you know, from the player's perspective. Have any of you two ever played the game Catherine? No. I have heard of it. I have heard of it. I've seen it. I've never played it, though. Oh, okay. So Catherine is basically a, a guy who has a girlfriend, uh, Catherine with a K, and he cheats on her mm -hmm. with um, a Catherine with a C. And it's sort <laughs> of like this puzzle. It's like a puzzle game where his like nightmares are haunted and eventually you end up choosing one of them gotcha yeah and then, although i actually i take that back there might be a few endings where you don't get any of them at all yes gotcha. because the, those endings have a kathy with a a y <laughs> oh really <laughs> so specific i know so sp very specific <laughs> i really like choice games oh no yeah or they're choose great your, choose your adventure I suppose. Yeah. 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 Again, they, they give me a sense of fulfillment when they I'm playing do. them, you know? Yeah. That's, um, why I, that's why I really like the open sandbox games, because they're oh, like yeah, the totally. ultimate endless choices. Yeah. So speaking of open sandbox games, I actually played Breath of the Wild for the first time last weekend on the Nintendo Switch. So I kind of want to talk about both, Did you Did you taste the cartridge? I, you know, I heard about that. My friend and I were talking about that. Did, and you, did you do it? So we were looking at, we pulled the cartridge out of the system and we looked at it and he's like, hey, did you hear that, that story about those kids who used to, or who like tried the cartridge and said it tasted like crap? And they're like, yeah. So they're like, we stared at each other holding the cartridge and he's like, yeah, we're not going to do it. So, <laughs> so we didn't do it. So I, I, I was trying to convince him to do it. I was like, dude, just do it. I'm right here. I kind of I want to see your reaction. He's like, Nah, it's okay. it's okay. It's fine. I'm like, come on, man. So Delicious BPAs. <laughs> so you chickened out. He chickened out. I, I oh, you actually tried it. No, I didn't. So I chickened out too. You know what? Fuck it. You know, <laughs> I bleeped that out. So I, <laughs> I wanted nope. to, I wanted to try it, but I, it was his game, and I didn't. I think I was wrong if if he didn't want to try it, and if I did it, because I I wanted his permission first. I suppose that's that is the correct etiquette way to do it because if someone yeah. <laughs> licked my games i don't know how i would feel about that when you, when you spend 60 dollars on a small piece of plastic it really becomes personal <laughs> yeah. and i really would rather you not lick my personal plastic yeah. objects <laughs> but uh yeah the playing the game was cool um we played it on the dock hooked up to the tv like 90 percent of the time um holding the joy cons is pretty cool uh he didn't bring over like the the controller port that you had to use that looked like a controller because there's like a, a a peripheral that comes with it where that has like the back ends of a controller and you just like put the joy cons into it and you can hold it like a controller but we he didn't bring it so we our arms are like moving freely so you could like cross your arms and play you yeah. can put one hand behind your head and play it was actually pretty cool um the graphics on the tv looked a little weird because it was like upscaled from the dock system to the tv and i heard a lot of people were complaining about that i didn't notice it too much but the closer i got to the tv i could see a little like some of the textures were a little pixelated and maybe that was just how the game was made maybe that's how it was uh when you know in in the system itself but uh overall i think did you it play was, anything else with the Switch? No, just Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild, I will say, is one of the best Zelda games I've ever played. My number one is still Wind Waker, but mm. this is probably a close second or third. Mm. I love Wind Maker. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine a dude like on top of a windmill just blowing. What's this song called? It's called Break Wind. <laughs> just a bunch of fart noises. Do you smell what I'm cooking? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, my now, experience with the Switch is cool. My so what I want to ask is, sure. when you, how many hours did you play Zelda? Wow. So we started at 11 and ended at 3 Okay, so you played for... Oh. <laughs> 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Okay. You started a previous day at 11 <laughs> p.m. and ended at the next, next day, 3 a.m. Yes. Just covered in... a small amount of time, I know. Covered in Cheetos <laughs> and Mountain Dew. 25 hours or something. <laughs> oh, God. Now, what did what exactly did you do in the game? Because there's, um, if there's one, col I guess, d highly debated thing that mm -hmm. I've noticed with Zelda, it's the amount of time that you spend hunting or cooking or, like, basically getting weapons and all these things because ev cause the weapons in this game 
break or they disintegrate sometimes right, you can't right. get the weapons back and it's like it's it's just a process in itself getting your supplies versus actually playing the game and i'm just curious how you, you like what you did with your time so my brother and i and my friend we were since he played like 70 hours of the game my brother and i were the first ones to try it and um we didn't really um care about gathering supplies so much because he and i played a lot of like survival games together my brother and yeah. i put a lot of hours into daisy and a lot of that is uh into a lot of that is gathering supplies and trying to build like a camp and base for yourself and so we didn't really want to spend our time doing that because it was our first time holding the switch and our first time playing breath of the wild so we wanted our experience to be more adventure focused so we didn't we spent a lot of time exploring we got off of um uh tutorial island as brandon mentioned two weeks ago Mm -hmm. so we got off the great plateau and we just went into the world and just hung out and looked for stuff Uh, unfortunately we died many times because there were guardians hunting our butts uh, yes, that's one of the things I like about the game is you can wander around and you will find very difficult creatures. Yes. At least in the beginning. I don't know how it's going to pan out later. Yeah. But uh, that's that's fun to give you keep you on your toes. But I have found that if you play the game normally, mm-hmm. you don't really need to focus on gathering so much because yeah. the game keeps you supplied. Yeah. Like if you just play the game, make sure that you're pretty much going to have the next things you need at all times. Mm-hmm. If you're just playing the game casually. Yeah, like living simply, you know, just like getting what you need when you need it as opposed to hoarding everything and waiting yes. for That's, waiting to I, use I, it. And I don't think they want you to play by hoarding anyway because they do <laughs> yeah. limit your inventory quite a bit yes. on a lot of things. And that was intentional so you don't sit there thinking that you need to just grab everything all mm-hmm. day long and keep everything because... It's the, the truth. Cr- yeah, the truth is it's just very easy to get everything. Yep. And what are you going to say? Oh, it's the complaint I just see all the time about this game specifically. It's the, mm-hmm. it's um, it's your inventory and how your weapons change. But you see, I've seen people play this game. I just think that it's a really cool like mechanic of the game. The fact that you kind of just have to manage your supplies mm-hmm. and manage your weapons and all these different things. And the fact that you can't just keep a, like the same weapon the entire time. Yeah. You have to be conscious of the enemies you're fighting, like all these different things too. Yeah, no, totally. It's diff- It's definitely a different kind of survival yeah. game. Yeah. It's not really a survival game to begin with. It's more like an action adventure, open world survival game if you want to put it like that. So everything. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like we were playing the physics of that game. This, yeah. I kept saying this game has everything. Like you can snipe the the minions like bubble bubble the goblins yeah. from really yeah. far Bobo, away bokobos or yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah chocobos you can snipe them from really far away they'll like look around and you can like they'll start dancing again because like they they're when they're around a fire they just start dancing and then you can kill one and they'll like look for who killed them you can burn fields of grass down yeah you can and then sometimes those goblins will run into the fire and light themselves on fire Sometimes they will light the grass on fire yeah. trying to burn you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And wow. So that's why this game has everything. Physics and it AI does. related. <laughs> it has physics. Uh, you can manipulate things mm-hmm. with magnetic. Yeah. You can manipulate yeah. things with explosives. Yes. Uh, like they'll have lots of puzzles where they'll have chests just floating in the water and you'll have to figure out how to get that chest out of there. Yep. One way or another. Some of them are simple. Some of them are more uh, complex. And that's what I liked about this game, too. As you just mentioned, the puzzles are, are a lot of fun. Like, they make you really think about the items you have in your inventory, the skills that you have, and how to apply them to the puzzle. Yeah, there's, there's been really interesting, like I said, uh, Tutorial Island was Tutorial Island, but not once did they ever go, this is a tutorial, this is how you do stuff. They basically give you trials mm-hmm. that are really simple and lightweight, and you figure it out, and by figuring it out, you've actually learned how to use that mechanic. Yeah. So it was very well done in my in my opinion, and that same mentality progresses throughout the game. Oh no. Uh, well, I kind of want to talk about the Switch. Uh, yeah, go for my it. Only, my only comment is that I don't think I'll buy this iteration of the Switch because they always update the consoles every like two or three years. Like they came with the PS4 Pro and yeah. PS4 uh, Slim recently, and I think I'll wait for the second iteration of the P- of the Nintendo Switch before I buy it. Yeah. I'm just a recommendation for the you guys. Swatch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me change one letter. <laughs> Introducing the new Nintendo Switch. It's called the Swatch, yeah. and they're actually just different colors, and you can choose your <laughs> yeah. color. That's pretty much what they're going to do. Like, you yeah. know how they had the 3DS and the 3DS XL? They just added different colors and made it a bigger screen. For all we know, they just heard our podcast, and that that, that is their idea now. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that's brilliant. Like, honestly, I pre- I'm pretty sure the next Nintendo Switch will just be a bigger screen with different colors. Like, right? Don't you, don't you guys think so? Yes. And maybe a more powerful 
processor. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. Like, yeah, different. I'll add it with a, like a different graphics card too. Maybe a better one. And only one. because the more powerful processor is actually cheaper for them to actually manufacture at the time. So yeah, because they're just trying to get out those numbers, you know, like mm -hmm. oh, these this many millions of people bought the Switch, and then when they get the next iteration out, it's like all right, now we have those dedicated fans who really want to spend money on a nicer system. You see, well, you don't have to worry about the, the audio jack being gone from the iPhone. Because <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you, Samsung, don't do that to your, to your like, Galaxy 8, please. They're going to do it, though. Also, they, they stop making will. exploding phones, and also <laughs> stop trying to hijack all the native Android functionality for your own, because that sucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen that mod for GTA 5, which is a Samsung Galaxy Note 7? It's just no. Like a, it's a grenade. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a skin grenade that looks like a phone. Oh, so I bet you when you do that one mission where you have to, you play Grand Theft Auto Five, right? I played all of it like three times. It was okay, so you know that one mission where you have to the CEO of that company and he's doing that press conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. actually see the skin of the Samsung Galaxy phone. Well, actually, because the, the phone they used for that guy yeah. in the game was like just a stock model of whatever they made because oh, it's one of the characters. Yeah, phones. you're right. But it, the actual mod looks just like the Galaxy Note Seven. All right. <laughs> it's like a realistic looking version. It was just funny because you could just throw it and it just it's just a grenade yeah, i was like this is okay damn, like insult to injury for samsung <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that was a great little mod so yes. if you have it on pc you could probably find it still unless maybe samsung took it down i don't know all right it's the best to make the uh, the samsung's into grenades because they explode the best <laughs> and the shards just fly everywhere it's really good shrapnel thank you mr president thank you <laughs> it's gonna be huge <laughs> okay i have one more game to talk about before we talk about random things. Sure. I, um, I've i heavily progressed in Final Fantasy. I think I'm two chapters away from finishing this entire game. So we talked about and, this um, last time. <laughs> no, actually, no. I haven't reached that chapter. Damn I it. lied. Okay. I'm three chapters away from oh. finishing the game. I'm three chapters away from finishing Final Fantasy. Shit got real. Shit got real. I think everyone hates me. <laughs> like, as in, like, my... You know how we're in that stage of Final Fantasy where all of the main characters are having conflicts with each other. Really? And it's kind of sad because something happens when you're in Altitia, which is the, um, I guess, the country that the four, it's the country that the four of them are from. It's cute that you remember the names of the countries. Yeah, obviously. How many countries are there? There's three? There's three altogether okay. in this. Or I like to say three. 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 Um, yeah, just... It's a really different mood now of Final It's not as happy as it was before. I want to go back. I kind of want to just go back to the open world where I did my random Chocobo side missions and <laughs> I was really happy. Now I'm sad because something, something has happened in Chapter 10. Everyone sort of hates Noctis. It's like, real, like it's, 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 it's a lot of conflict right now. And I will, there's one thing I will say about the storyline, which... I don't know if we can even resolve in the next three chapters, mm -hmm. but I, um, the only, so there's four main characters and the only side character that we've really had like an extra plot about has been Gladiolus so far. Okay. And there's th two other side characters, Ignis and Prompto. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little, I guess, I kind of wish they had more side plots, mm -hmm. um, but I suppose Ignis is having his side plot right now because he's having an identity crisis. I've, ex and, <laughs> I've experienced some with Prompto. Yeah, but the, th but the thing is, is like when you experience it with Prompto, it's like the, it's a side mission, but it's not actually like part of the main storyline, I suppose. Mm. It's because Prompto's not as cool as Gladius. He's Gla Gladiolus? Gladiolus. But he's the photographer, though. Gladiolus. That's what I was going to say. The only thing I know about Prompto is that he's the photographer. He is the photographer. And he has a nice camera. And also, his, his face is the most frequent thing in the photos. <laughs> It God, is. God damn it. <laughs> but then you can also specify what Prompto takes a picture of. That's cool. So, Not your face, Prompto. <laughs> so, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on. We'll, I have a feeling I'm going to finish Final Fantasy by the end of April. Gotcha. Which falls in line with Persona 4 coming out. Persona, Persona 5 coming out. You gotta finish Yakuza 0, too. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. There's just so many games. <laughs> 
That's true. So many things I have to do. It's Rocket League. <laughs> there's Rocket League. There's all of these different things. Next month, uh, ukulele comes out. I, we talked about this in our yeah. second podcast. I'm probably going to be busy with that too. So Yakuza Zero might have to go in the back burner. I'm like, no, I want to finish it. So I'm trying to scramble and finish it. Yeah. And then, you know, just unpredictably every four months, uh, Terraria just comes out with another patch with 500 <laughs> megabytes of stuff in it, so I have to play that for 20 hours each what? time. Each time. That is a great game. We should play together. Yes. Like, do you have it on PC? Yes. You play Terraria too? I play. Yeah, I play it on PC. Oh my god. Yeah. Do you have? You, do you have it? Yeah. Wait on what? Steam. Oh wait, what the heck? We need. We need to do a three. Okay, we need. We need to all. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> we need to all like swap Steam IDs, guys. I mean, I didn't even know this. This is. People are going to start yelling at us in the comments. We all play games, but we have no idea yeah. <laughs> how to play games with each other. We don't play with each other on Steam. We're not real people. We're not real friends. You're not real gamers. <laughs> no, yeah. we're real friends. We're all Facebook friends, so. Real friends. Oh, wait. How many of us? I have a really random thing I want to talk about. Me and too, I, me too. Yeah, actually, I do too. Okay. Do so, but it's gaming related. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is actually not gaming related, but I okay. suppose this is media entertainment related. Sure. Jeremy knows the story. I don't know if you know the story. I do. Okay. Yes. Okay, go on. Go you know, on. You know what I'm talking about, I think. Uh, I think. Okay, go on. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know what I'm yes. talking about. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Donovan's all so, curious. There was a story that I saw, and um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's someone a from um, a previous Power Rangers. I don't know which oh. Power Rangers it was. Oh, snap. And he, so he was just found guilt oh no he pleaded he recently pleaded guilty of a crime and this crime is for killing and stabbing someone with a samurai sword and is this real life this is real life (laughs) a a previous power ranger (laughs) yes this is what your life can be brandon let the fans hear you (laughs) it wasn't tommy it was that's the only one i remember no i feel like the world would have a really like there would be a collective cry if it was actually tommy from was it the black power ranger (laughs) That's so you messed up. Me. We're not including this. <laughs> what? Making this up. No, this is a real thing. Well, I'm not making this up. By the yeah. way, there's a, there's a fourth person who joined this podcast. Yeah, he was sitting across from us the entire time, but don't worry about it. He's, he's going to speak too. Yes, yes this, is a, this is a real thing. This really happened. And um, I don't remember the details, Jeremy, if you remember the details. The reason he ended up stabbing him with a samurai sword is because there was a conflict about a parking space. Yeah, that's it. No, you told me. It was, yeah. it was like it was like his friend's girlfriend parked her car in a way, and then the guy with the samurai sword was like, "Oh, well, pissed off," and okay, so he kept the sword by the door. <laughs> this isn't Japan? SoCal. No, 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 SoCal. not Japan. <laughs> this isn't SoCal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a real story. Yeah. So it happened I am in not 20- making this up. It happened in 2015, and the case was settled recently. So he was the yes. original Power Ranger. No, no, he wasn't the original. He was I like, feel like this was season six or something. He was like a Power Ranger Turbo Dinosaur Samurai something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he <laughs> got to keep the prop, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I have one more random piece of news that's sure. not actually even media or entertainment related, but it's entertaining to me. I'm pregnant. No, it's not that. Oh. Anyway. God. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so Pizza Hut recently came out with this... Um, I'm pregnant with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> pizza Hut recently came out with these pizza shoes. And these pizza shoes <sighs> are connected to, like a, I guess, a, a system, like a GPS system or whatever. And they deliver pizza to whatever's in the radius. What the They also hell? have pregnancy tests on the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> and seems apt yes and um this is a new thing and in domino's response to this domino's came out with a wedding registry oh wow and that's all the exciting news i have today about that's pizza. like the stupid snapchat glasses <laughs> oh that is so out. stupid clack 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's like those have you guys seen those Snapchat glasses that came out recently? Snapchat glasses? Yeah, they're like called specs. And basically, you hook up your Snapchat account to your glasses via Bluetooth from your phone. And you could just like walk around taking pictures of stuff and like recording video through your glasses. And it's been a privacy problem because people are like, we, they don't know if you're actually recording them Wait, or not. Dude, but also, why would anybody want to see Snapchats of me just touching myself all day long? <laughs> well, if you want to do that, go ahead. <laughs> but these, so these glasses are in limited supply and they're, they're in like pop up shops around different cities. So you have to follow their Twitter or something to find so out what you're going to buy them. So these glasses are only for Snapchat. Yes. They don't only... even have a prescription attached to it. No, they're, they're sunglasses to be clear. They're, 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 sunglasses. Not, they're not prescription yeah, glasses. Know what you're sunglasses. looking at because yeah. you're a pervert. That's why it's been a privacy problem. So if you're a pervert, 
and or questionable nature, go out to where Snapchat glasses are purchased and or sold. Yes. And go out and buy and or purchase a Snapchat glasses. Pretty much. And the thing that makes me like feel bad about it is like it's like 10 or 15 bucks for a pair when they feel like they're like two dollars like you can get them at party city so i'm, those, those I'm actually awesome. shocked that it's only 15 to 20 bucks could we possibly just use yeah. google glasses pretty i too? think you could yeah i mean like I need gra- the google glasses for things <laughs> i'm sure reasons for- People, wealthy people who had Google Glasses probably did that, let's be honest. <laughs> that was the only reason they were invented, let's be honest. Yeah, you're right. Just to watch you. Yeah, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> people need to see this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hand is attacking me. <laughs> Facebook live stream? <laughs> oh, that, that bothers me too. Like, I don't care what you're doing. I think what's really annoying to me about Facebook live stream is that they notify me yes. when someone is live streaming, it which I give, so which I don't care let's about. Be, let's face it, it's probably the greatest bane to cops this day and age right now. Yeah. We're not going to go into that, but I agree. <laughs> I, do, yeah. I do agree, but I don't want to go into that topic. Like, I get a notification, and I think it's, like, a text or, like, something important. No, it's, like, so-and-so is, like, streaming. It's, like, first of all, why are you telling me this? I don't care. <laughs> so I've, I've actually done it once, but um, it was – so what I did was – And you I, know what, Jeremy? I was notified when you did it once. Yeah, I'm sure you did. But, <laughs> but you see what I was doing? I just put my, my tablet in front of the TV, and I was playing Borderlands with my three friends, and that was it. It was, like, a let's play. <laughs> we were just yelling at each other. And then I tried doing it by my inter- connection. internet connection sucks, so then I, I turned it off. I like to watch a lot of YouTubers, like some, some gamers like, like talk about games and like play games and well just less plays in general. Um, so I found out recently that there's this, in Japan, there's this girl who's like an AI, but she's like animated and she will play games and she'll talk about how like Basically, imagine like a, an anime girl playing games and talking about it. But there's, a, there's videos where she realizes she's an AI and like an animation, and she's like trying to break out of this ex- existential crisis. And it's actually pretty funny. Wait, so um, is it she's programmed to think like she there's like parts it's like of one her. It's one of the Star Trek Hollow Deck programmed <laughs> episodes. Wait, it's there's so there's like parts of her program where she she realizes she's an AI and she freaks out. Yeah, pretty much that. There's a whole episode dedicated to it, and like it has English subtitles. It's all in Japanese, but uh, uh, I only watched like two videos of it, and it seems kind of entertaining so far. So it's like some girl who's voice acting this character also is the head of the channel, and she basically animates the character and like plays games along with it and makes the character which is herself talk about the game while she's animating or like talk or playing it so i thought it was kind of clever there's a new way to like do youtubing so Being a tube lord oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> i'm going right now <laughs> log me in dot <laughs> com i'm just um <laughs> I'm actually kind of shocked, but I'm not shocked that because it was bound to happen eventually. Oh yeah, totally. But I'm still shocked. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that it's, it's a, a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's kind of a cool concept to be honest. With like with, in this day and age when everyone's playing Minecraft and, mm. and, and, and like talking about it and recording it. Do you play Minecraft? I used to. Do you record it? Do you <laughs> no, I've never recorded. Subscribe to your channel. No, I, I no, I don't. What I'm small, not Captain Sparkles. What thing are you building today? I'm that building. Anybody can build. I'm building Get a swastika. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Will you watch my video now? Go on. It's like, I build a swastika? You know how people in all caps put like a question mark? Uh-huh. And, then, and then it's like, I'm really building a swastika. That's, that's it. That's not nine, a booby. <laughs> <laughs> I think what, annoy, what annoys me about um, a lot of Minecraft videos on YouTube is that um, I'm trying to actually learn how to do something. Like, for mm-hmm. example, when I was first starting the game, I kind of wanted to know how to make my own mine shaft. So yeah. I'm searching for these videos. But it's but a lot of them are just more like like let like let's plays and like people like fucking around versus like an actual instructional video of yeah, how to yeah, create yeah, a yeah. fucking mine shaft. So in my in my Minecraft world I had I had like the super elevators that were automatic. Yeah. And built all those things. I never built any of those like sixteen uh, bit, thirty two bit computers that people went nuts on. Yeah, that was but weird. I did have cool things like automatic lumber machines. Ooh. And yeah. I had um, That's helpful. Yeah, I would try to make helpful automation buildings. Yeah. Uh, my favorite was the chicken mass genocide 
tower <laughs> that would literally just pump chickens out and murder them for me. Oh my god! And then when you murder them, there's still eggs, and they is just pizza oh no, process over again. Oh no! I didn't actually again. collect any of the things. I actually, oh. just sent all that to the incinerator. I just oh. wanted to murder chickens. Sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a Walton oh Gromit movie. Like that movie Chicken Run. It sounds like that. Yes. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> Quack. What games um, did she play? I'm just curious. She played Inside is one of the games. I think that's the name of the game. I don't know. Inside. Inside or outside? It was like, I was ironic because, you know, you play games inside. I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh, that's the only video I watched. I only watched two of the videos so far. So. Okay. Maybe I'll check her out tonight and see what other videos she's playing. For sure. Mm-hmm. Games she's playing. Yeah. Seacrest out. <laughs> well, um, we've hit our mark, actually. If you want to call it a day, we can end it. And that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the fifth episode. And just thank you for supporting this podcast throughout. Like, this is something we really care about, something we love to talk about to just kind of escape from everything. And we really appreciate your support. See you next week. <laughs>